Now let's program the PLC to control the servo motor. Now uh, before that I want to explain you one more point which I skipped in the last video. From the PLC we have connected the output to the pin number 22 and 20 for the pulse input and sign. There's one more thing we need to connect in the common of PLC. Now if you know the common is the terminal so that when you turn on the output the common signal which is signal which is at the common comes out from the output. So what we are giving to the servo we have to connect to the common. So the, to the common we have to connect pin number 13. Now pin number 13 is the internal zero volt supply of the driver. Now you see how the circuit gets complete. This 19 is getting 24 from the driver and zero is coming from the PLC because zero is connected to the common. So the pulses in the form of zero volt is coming to the driver. So that's how the circuit between 21 and 22 gets complete. If you see here 20 and 21 there is a LED here or there is a, there's a kind of optocoupler so it has uh, two ways LEDs connected okay so it doesn't matter you can also take 24 pulses from the PLC and you can connect 0 to pin number 19 and 21 instead of connecting that to 7 you can connect that to 13 then you can connect 7 to the PLC output and you will get pulses of 24 volts so either way you can do that because if you see inside the structure of the servo it's two-way LEDs connected and that's a photodiode or flow transistor okay so we have to make sure that your common should be connected to polarity other than you have which you have connected to pin number 21 and 22 which is a common okay that is I want to show you so let me show you the wiring which I have done in the trainer so here if you see that is that is a wiring part okay this is pin number 22 pin number 21 pin number 20 and 19 so these are connected with the PLC output these are the PLC outputs so the common is connected to 30 number so that's the wiring of the trainer the same way which I have explained in the diagram all right so let's proceed to the programming now here I'm using the PLC is GVP 12 SA 12 SA is a special type of PLC if I want to show to see I can show you I'll go to new and I'll select the PLC this is the SA series of PLC now in SA series generally if, I, if you want to if you want to have a look I can show you here in SA series we have oops wait a minute in SA series we have high speed transistor outputs that's how the PLC looks like this is 12 SA we have high speed outputs because high speed outputs are used to create pulses at high frequency okay so we need transistor type high speed output from the PLC so this PLC has Y0 and Y1 as high speed outputs. so I'm using Y1 as a high speed output okay so you have to make sure your PLC should be transistor type if you're controlling servos otherwise using relay type this will not work all right so let's proceed now with the programming code the code what I'm going to write is I'll take a bit LTM0 this is my you can see that it's a dummy bit all right I can also give it a comment to start that's my dummy bit using this bit I want to run the servo by one revolution okay let's take an example one revolution so what we have discussed earlier K120 defines one RPM and K7200 defines 360 degree which is one revolution all right so this is my bit starting bit now I'll write a command which is DPLSY this is a code for writing the servo command DPLSY it can be PLSY generally it is PLSY if you're if you're writing pulses more than 16 bit then you have to write DPLSY right now I can use PLSY as well so PLSY now the first in syntax after PLSY is the RPM so I'll write K1200 now if you see the formula 120 is 1 RPM so this is like 10 RPM okay this is 1200 then the next constant is the revolution K7200 I'm taking one revolution okay now I'll write the output from where I need the pulses so I'll write Y1 Y1 because my Y1 is connected to my position mode to my uh, pulse input this is Y1 this is connected to pulse input so I'm creating um, uh, I'm creating pulses which will drive the servo with one RPM and one revolution so let's check that I'm going to end this program let's see that in the PLC so I'm going to download this one the PLC wiring is already done you can see the results here 
Okay. Now when I have to, I'll turn this, wait, wait a second, I'll just split the screen. Now I'm going to run this M0, this will drive my motor. Okay. I can also split it like... Okay. So when I run my M0, you can notice this will rotate by one revolution. See? This is going to stop exactly from where it starts. Turn it off, turn it on again. It will go for a complete one revolution. Okay, so this is 10 RPM, one revolution, right? If you want me to change the RPM, I can make it 12,000, which is 100 RPM. Now it will run by 100 RPM, exactly one revolution. And download. Downloaded, running M0 again. So that's 100 RPM. Very simple. If you know the formulas of your servo, this makes it very simple. Again, if you have to start it again, M0 should be off, then it should be on. One more thing. If I stop M0 in between, servo will stop immediately. So let's say if I give 10 revolutions, I see it gives me an error because this is more than 36,000. So I'll write hit D, DPLSY this take more space more memory in the PLC now I'm giving 10 revolutions with 100 rpm okay so here I go now if I stop in between stop this bit it will stop wherever it is okay you have to make sure that this is not pulse executed command you have to maintain its state before so this is going to take 10 revolutions and then it will stop exactly there this is 10 revolutions so this was the simple way to start the servo motor if you want to if you want to give some angles let's say I give here nine, 900 pulses this will give me 45 degree oh wait a second not this one this is for the RPM RPM let it be 1200 this factor I'm reducing it to 900 so this will give me index of 45 degree because 20 pulses is 20 pulses is 1 degree and if you divide this by 20 you get 45 that is a 45 degree oh wait a second if I give here 3600 zero, zero, that will give me 180 degree because 7200 is 360 degree this will go to 180 degree and that is a 10 RPM. Alright, so that's how you can, you know, play around with your pulses and you can control your servo motor in one direction. In the next video, we'll see how to rotate the motor in another direction. Alright, thank you.